Hey there, it is Tom Sher on behalf of Indie Structure Productions once again, and we are continuing on with the great guitar build off slash anniversary build. Now getting to a certain point in the build where the lines start to blur on what step is coming next and whatnot, I have no issues with you using the chapter markers to kind of skip around the video a little bit, as long as you find the content that you're looking for. And I appreciate you just checking out the video in general. So I'm gonna get into it. This time we're gonna be working on, well, whatever it says in the title.
that it's going to be just kind of loud. Right? And we're going to go and we're going to catch that thing. I don't usually do that, but that's how we do it. So, Get to not go on the pencil line because the pencil line is gone off. So we want to go a little bit and yeah, have to do it. It's much easier to get the next Time to glue on the headstock plate. I keep on calling it a veneer, but I mean, it's like four mil thick. So yeah, not exactly veneer. This is the dry glue up. Once again, very important phase that. I have not found any fault whatsoever in the glue joint. And it looks to be a fairly simple, simple glue up, even with this, which one was it? I think it's this one being a bit shoddy. I'm fully aware that I might be going a bit overboard with clamps here, but. I've had times when clamping up headstocks, I haven't gotten the right amount of pressure and the wood has lifted a little bit on the edges. So that's been a real big bother I'm using a dataless uh, template, headstock template here to kind of hold this in place. I have once again done the, as you can see, it's not falling off. I've done the same sort of locating pin trick that I did with the fretboard. 
except really is stuck on here. Um, I've drilled through on two of the tuner holes here, so there and there, just to kind of hold it at a good orientation and very short little stubs so that they don't interfere with the glue up and they will be easy to deal with when I'm drilling through again. Because if I have them flush to the headstock like plate, it might be a bit hard to drill straight through them because let's face it, they are fiber optic. So this should be a little easier in that regard as well. But before we can do any gluing up of sorts, I do need to open up this because it's gonna be a hell of a lot easier to do this now than later. And what I'm originally thinking was just the Dremel to do that, but I might as well just use a coping saw and yeah, cut that out. Might be the easiest to do that. So I'm gonna do that now. Let's get cracking. Now, with this being quite a small area, I do want to slightly deburr that. There. Um, now, with this being, like I was saying, a very small area, think the paint roller will be a little too much. Could do that with here, but we'll see. Don't wanna get glue into the <coughs> truss rock cavity there. A little too much, so we'll put it onto the opposite side. Might need to do a little bit of cleanup in the truss rock cavity hole after the fact, but that's not too big a deal. We'll put an ever so slight small bit of tape at the end of the um, Allen key there, because that is the one place we don't want any glue to go in. So just a little bit of tape that I can easily pull out once this whole thing goes on. Locating pin number one, locating pin number two. There we go. Very hard because there's the volute on the other side or what's going to be a volute on the other side. Yeah, fortunately, don't need too much pressure on this. Nice even amount of glue coming out. There we go. I could hear the glue getting squeezed in the joint. That was that was nice. Not a not a terrible amount of pressure needed. Everything's held in place pretty well. Even amount of glue all over the place. I'm just gonna wipe off the excess because there is there's a good bit extra. All right, I'm gonna go clean up my brush and come back in a couple of hours to declamp and see what's up. All right, so I wanna figure out my staining for this guitar. Because what I did back in the day um, on the original was, well, I did the carving and then I used Citadel paints. So, cause I used to do a lot, of, a lot of miniature building and miniature painting. So I used those and kind of those techniques to get what I wanted in there. 
uh, a couple of different colors. There was a couple of different reds and then some orange for the highlight sort of things around the edges. Um, now, I did a little bit of a carve here just to kind of try things out and see how, first of all, how cutting into the birch feels, get kind of a feel for it. Also test things out. So now I have, uh, what is it? I have cherry red on the bottom. Then I sanded it very lightly with uh, Kovacs blue pad and added crimson red on top of that. So yeah, I'm using Crimson Guitars Stunning Spirit Stains. I kind of like how things are right now. And I think clears will really make that pop. For the top and back, I'm gonna start with brown. And then I'm thinking I'm gonna sand that down, put orange, then sand that down and put amber on top. Because what I did with the original was, well, I just sanded it and then I put this tinted boat varnish on top and just slather it on the entire thing. Um, well, the entire top. And that's how I got that color. But it's sort of like a orangey hue. So I'm gonna try and replicate that somehow. So testing that out here. Let's just, now I have the brown. So let's sand some of that down. Maybe make my life easier. Now the brown I really just want you know, in the flame, to be honest. So I might as well just go a bit rougher on that. And I'm using these Kovacs pads now just to kind of both test them out and well, they're at hand. <laughs> so I think that's probably good. Bring that up a little bit. So I'll go through the grits. Now the back and top are gonna have this color. And I think I'm gonna go for a sort of brown, um, hmm, actually, which way should I do it? Probably black base coat, lightly sand it back, and then brown on top for the neck and the mahogany. So yeah, let's try what orange will look like on this. And then we'll take this back a little bit and possibly put amber. I don't want this to be, yeah, I sanded the brown too much. Cause I don't, <laughs> I don't want this to be a bright colored guitar cause it's not a bright colored guitar. So this is a bit too loud for what I'm going for. A bit too orangey. I'm gonna add it. While it's wet, I'm gonna add a touch of brown still to the mix. And that's more getting there. Right, now I think that looks pretty good. Now it's very brown, but it's got a little bit of that orange in there. So I'm gonna let that dry and then try some amber on top of that, because I think the amber is gonna make that pop. Because now it's just, well, it's brown. <laughs> so we need to make that look pretty cool. And these are now very close together. This like gore sort of thing can easily, I want that to be a bit darker. So once I put amber on top of that, I think that will work very well in combination with this. Now there's not, a big enough difference between the two. I wonder if I have enough orange in there. We'll see, I'll add the amber and we'll see what it looks like. So let's let that dry. 